I am here with Rick Seebeck. He is the superintendent of Gladwin Community Schools. And 2011 was a very exciting year because we saw something happen that hadn't happened several times in the past, and that was that the Hadley Restoration Proposal finally passed by one vote. Exactly. Yeah, so how much money does that mean? The district will collect about $190,000 um, that it hadn't been able to collect in the past. Very good. And that covers what years? That will be next year. Mm -hmm. and the following year, mm -hmm. taking us through 2012, mm -hmm. and then the district will have to uh, renew its entire operating millage in 2013. Gotcha. Um, now, if that 2013 operational millage didn't pass, what would that mean? That's a disaster. Okay. Yeah, there's just no other way to look at it. Schools are funded, um, well, Gladwin Community Schools um, is funded in large part by the 18 mil operating millage um, that is levied on all non-homestead properties. And that dollar amount equals about... 30% of our entire operating budget. So if our operating millage didn't pass, we would have to make reductions totaling about 30% of our operation, which just can't happen. So it would be a disaster. Yeah, so prior to that, you guys are in pretty good condition, looking at maybe any cuts for 2012? Depends on what the state does. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have to watch what the state revenue consensus conference looks like in January, um, early February. And if the state doesn't reduce our dollar per pupil um, student aid, we should be in pretty good shape next year. If there are further reductions from the state, we'll have to adjust our expenditures to meet the realities of, of the new revenues. Mm -hmm. um, but if that happens, uh, we'll follow the same plan that we always have here at Gladwell Community Schools, and that is making sure we keep those cuts as far away from students and student programs as we can. And we've done an outstanding job of that over the course of the last seven years. Uh, we've made significant cuts in our operating costs, but those cuts have not impacted the services that we provide the community or the programs that we provide the kids. Right, because that's the important part. Absolutely. That, you know, I would think it's one of the strengths. What would you say the strengths are at Gladwin Community Schools? Well, the biggest strength that we have is we've, we've assembled a really good team. Whether you're driving the school bus, teaching in a classroom, an administrator leading one of our buildings, um, a board member um, helping to direct me as I direct the district. We've been, we have a really good team in place, and that team has developed a plan, and we've followed that plan as closely as possible, and the plan works. In every aspect of the district, we've managed to have significant improvements over the last several years, whether it's um, our, our buildings and, and grounds, whether it's our curriculum overhaul with the curriculum questions that has absolutely um, it was a renaissance in our curriculum. That was wonderful. That was a wonderful overhaul of, of curriculum. And the kids are learning learning more than they, than they ever have. Mm -hmm. um, to the athletic um, facilities that we've all um, just renovated as well. And there was a nice article in the paper about yeah. that here recently. So we have a great team, and the team has a plan, and we follow the plan, and it works. And if we continue to do that, Gladwin Community Schools will continue to be an extraordinary district, um, a very, bio, bio, you know, very vibrant and exciting place for kids to go to school. Well, and next year, 2012, are we looking at any new upgrades to, to the things the students do have or at the buildings? Yeah, we're on a, we've got a real exciting, um, real exciting future planned in the area of technology. Oh. We um, started with the intermediate school and we started um, smart technology, you know, smart classroom technology. We installed it in all the intermediate school classrooms. And we moved then to, um, well, actually, we did the junior high first. We started with the junior high and we installed the systems there. Every classroom has a new smart learning system in it. Then we went to the intermediate school and we installed them there this year. Mm -hmm. And next year, um, tail end of this year, beginning of next year, we will have them installed at the high school. So we're continuing to upgrade technology in a big way at the school system and it's starting to bring our teaching practices into the 21st century. And it's, it's pretty exciting for the kids and the teachers. Very good. And you guys have a pilot math program we do. that you guys are working on that's going to continue mm -hmm. into next year. And we do. We're piloting a K-5 math program to help us align our, our math teaching and our math curriculum with the state's new Common Core standards. And that's a very exciting piece that we're working on right now. So a lot of hard work's going into that. We're testing it right now to see mm -hmm. how it works. Whenever we implement a new program, we run it first and we compare it to the old program. We don't want to just go out and spend money on something new just because it's right, new. Right. We need to make sure it works first. We're going through that process right now and it appears pretty. It appears that it's going to work very well and it's pretty exciting stuff. Very good. Well, thank you for coming in and talking to us about you know what we're going to expect in the next year and, and have a great Christmas and New Year. I will. You do the same. Thanks.